Uh, I'm Griff Green. I'm co-founder of Giveth and uh, had uh, lots of adventures with the DAO back in the day. I was a Bitcoiner for a long time and I was always really excited about decentralizing the sharing economy. I was always a big fan of the tools outside of currency, really the decentralized governance possibilities. And one of, I'm a digital nomad, I have been traveling, I haven't had like a steady place to live for about six years. And one of the things I needed in my life was uh, easy access to things without having to own it because I don't want to carry it around. And so I got really excited about uh, decentralizing the sharing economy. I wrote some white papers and uh, worked on that while I was getting a degree in digital currencies. And I heard about this company called Slocket and they were doing something I really wanted to be a part of. So I kind of just sent them an email every couple weeks until they finally like let me be a part of it. It was like, I will work for free, like just let me in. And so that got me started in Ethereum, which I didn't really follow at the time because there was a lot of uh, people talking it down like it was vaporware or something. And then when I started working on it and got into the community and started like just hanging out on the subreddit, everyone was so nice. I didn't even know like I was in crypto anymore. It felt like a different world. And so uh, since then I just got kind of obsessed with it. And uh, now after the DAO hack uh, and all of that, I got really deep into the network and now I feel like I'm a, like a decent part of the community. Ethereum has all the tools you need to actually uh, decentralize all the things. You know, that's, that's the biggest piece. I, I don't, I, I, it's hard to say anything besides the community because to me that is the most important. Like all the, the devs and, and the culture that's here is just, you know, I feel like it has the best opportunities to actually push the world forward in a positive direction that's not so focused. People in this, in this, uh, in the Ethereum community are more focused on the technology than just trying to make a lot of money. And that's what excites me. Although, of course, the other thing is on the money side, there are, is a lot of experimentation. You know, all these ICOs that are being created, they're all creating their own economies and they all have an opportunity to rewrite the story of money and, you know, experiment with something and change how things work and that most of that action is here in Ethereum so I want to be here too. Oh man I, I think it'll happen naturally in the end we got to get stuff that works and put it out in people's hands I think obviously status getting it on the mobile is the most important thing uh, if uh, we are live in a mobile world. Everyone has a smartphone, and if we can't, right now it's really hard to do Ethereum on a smartphone. So if we can't get a, you know these tools out there in people's hands, then uh, then we can't really grow much further. Everyone, uh, Matthew Tan gave a talk about how much uh, how many people are actually using Ethereum and what uh, systems they're using. It was like 70% desktop. I mean that's insane uh, on EtherScan. Uh, that's not, when you look at the world, it's more like 70 to, you know, 50 to 90 percent, depending on the country, people are using the, their mobile for internet. Well, given this kind of uh, the, you know, happy ending of the DAO to me, uh, it's uh, taking the same idea of, you know, putting a bunch of money in one spot for a cause, but making it a nonprofit cause. So. Uh, Giveth is kind of like a simple, it has in the middle a simple GoFundMe layer, which is, uh, you know, just like Kickstarter and all these things where you're kind of a marketplace where you're trying to match people who have money and a desire to change the world to people who have the time and the plan to make that change a reality. In the current charity system, there's this charity in the middle that kind of blocks the extra value that can be transferred. They take the money and then route it over to the, from these guys to these guys. And, but they don't actually get to connect the people. They're actually in the way. And I really believe that communities are what change the world. I mean, obviously this whole talk, I can't get off of communities. So uh, if, if we put these guys in the same chat room, then you know, beautiful ideas will be able to be, will come out of it. And it's not just about sharing the resources of money, it's, it's about sharing the resources of ideas and time and effort and connecting everybody together. We, we live in a world where you can tweet Donald Trump and yet you don't know who's using your donations for something and it's, it just doesn't make any sense. So uh, we kind of have this GoFundMe layer in the middle. Above that we have a community layer, you know, building, uh, trying to build a culture of altruism and experimenting with decentralized governance, which is uh, something that's really near and dear to my heart. 
I really hope Giveth can be a playground for DAOs to uh, come in and if you want to experiment with the decentralized governance protocol, uh, you can actually test it by starting a charity. You know, uh, take your UI, take your smart contracts, and then say, hey, we want to do the most good for homelessness. And beta test it, airdrop some money to all of your, uh, all your uh, supporters, and then uh, let them uh, have control over the donations and see how it works out. That's uh, give it as a, a, a playground for that because we have the GoFundMe layer, the network of uh, communities, which is basically a chat room almost, and then uh, the smart contract layer, which is another thing that we have a huge advantage on because uh, Giveth was started by the White Hat Group and we have the best smart contract developers in the world. And uh, one of the big reasons for that is we're not trying to make money. You know, uh, we are really, truly an altruistic, you know, loosely grouped set of hackers that are just trying to make the world a better place. We have no legal entity, and that is it by a design because without a legal entity, you can't make a profit. You know, is everything is happening in the smart contract realm, and everything is just loose and fun and experimental. Uh, yes, actually, we have a POC DAP on mainnet. It's been on mainnet since November, October. Like, well, we started the smart contracts, and I think we started actually funding it actually in January. Excuse me. And we uh, ran a Burning Man camp where everyone paid their dues in Ether, and then uh, all the money that was uh, collected uh, for it to actually leave the smart contracts, we had to show receipts for what was paid out, and then uh, we're still waiting on the receipts. Burners aren't the most uh, you know, diligent at getting some things done. So, uh, but when we get this last receipt for our electric bill, everyone will get a refund for the ether that wasn't spent. Uh, we run Giveth completely through our POC DAP, uh, but, uh, and, and we have actually Alice.si we work closely with, and they received a donation through us, and they have uh, milestones that get reviewed. And so we've run a couple uh, things through our POC DAP, but our actual like MVP is still on testnet. We're almost done with it, two looks, two looks, you know, uh, and it'll be on mainnet and then we'll start using it and we're gonna have a slow, steady roadmap. Uh, we're really well connected with the My Ether Wallet guys. They're gonna be one of our first users just to play with their donations and build a community around, around their donation. Uh, they actually get a lot of donations, so, uh, I mean, they're doing great work and they're uh, on the forefront of things, so they won't really wanna work with us on that. And I have another, uh, we'll just slowly add groups and you know, it's no rush. You know, we want to do it right. We want to, uh, you know, evolve with Ethereum. And this is one big experiment, and we're we're taking it seriously as an experiment uh, that we want to take the long term. So we're not going to rush it. I, I did that once, um, and so you know, we're gonna we're gonna take it slow and steady and make sure it works. There's just not enough tools in this ecosystem. Uh, everything we're on the forefront of new technology. Uh, we have uh, we've broken up into three different groups, uh, and you know organizing ourselves is always an interesting thing because we're trying to model a decentralized altruistic community. We we ourselves we practice holacracy. We uh, we're trying to we're trying to uh, be the write the handbook for what we're trying to build, and we don't even have the tool that we're trying to work with yet. And so it's 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 an adventure. Uh, and we've kind of broken up into these three groups where we have the core product guys that uh, that there is a handbook for. You know, we can have a normal corporate structure with that, with the designer and the you know front end guy, the back end guy, and just the classic thing because building an application has been done a million times over. We don't need to recreate that. But how do smart contract devs that you know bought Ether when it was one dollar and honestly don't you know, aren't working for money, they're working out of the goodness of their heart and they just want to innovate. Like, how do we organize that, you know, research lab? And then the other side of it is how do we create decentralized organizations? How do we build, this was one of the biggest problems for the DAO. Honestly, the DAO had a lot more problems than just the bug. And it was because we rushed it and no one really knew their roles. And if you're going to build a system for people, you have to define the, the handbook. You have to define like what does the curator do? What does the DAO token holder do? What does a, con, uh, you know, a contractor do? And uh, with Giveth, that's why we're taking it slow and we're experimenting. 
with our own donations, everything is transparent, and we've changed the structure of how we pay ourselves like five times. And it will probably change it another five times before the end of the year, uh, because we're just iterating and it gets better and better and better and more effective. Uh, right now, we actually make it so that no one can get paid without making a video, because uh, I feel like that's the most transparent thing to do and it's a uh, very uh, resistance to fraud. You know, Nigerian prince can write a text email, uh, you can Photoshop pictures, but videos, you know, they're real. And at the same time, if you're a volunteer, you know, and you're, you're like trying to help people, you, you know, I don't want to just rewrite a decentralized grant program on Ethereum and make people fill out a bunch of forms. I want to make it easy so that the people who are volunteering can just like make a quick video and then, you know, go about their day and like make cool, good things happen in the world and not have to spend time writing and typing and do all this stuff, you know. We're, we're innovating in this space and I, I really think that we have a, a, a really good chance to make some huge changes in this world and just rewrite the future of giving, you know, rebuild the future of giving.